Let's do more complicated space-time diagrams. I put that quote there for Albert Einstein. I love it because, of course, he's not quoting that. <laughs> it's so meta. Okay, so we've got multiple frames of reference this time. So what do I mean by this? We're going to be considering, and now watch me carefully, we're going to be considering what happens if you have a frame of reference that's you know still or stationary, and at the same time you have a frame of reference that then is moving. And we're going to be overlaying these two frames of reference. Now in textbooks or on exams and stuff like that, it just looks like a big mess. I want to show you how this works by generating these sort of on the fly here as we go along. Just to try to show you, and I'm also going to color code them, I think it's important there. So first of all, we're going to consider more than one inertial frame. And what does inertial mean again? Remember it means not accelerating. That's a key part here. Okay, so if it's not accelerating, that's good. So things are just moving at constant speeds. And I'm going to put in black this frame S. So the CT and X, that's going to be frame S. Of course, if I wanted to, I can put the world line of a photon. Remember, that should be at uh, 45 degrees. I'm trying to draw something like that. Just remember, in case you want to draw a photon or light or something like that, that's at 45 degrees. So we're going to consider frame S, which has coordinates X and CT. But we're going to have a new frame called S primed. We're using the same notation we've been using all along. Okay, So uh, S primed is going to be this uh, reference frame that's moving. And it's going to have coordinates X primed and CT primed. And we're going to say that this frame S, it moves at a speed or a velocity V as measured by frame S. In other words, if you're sitting in frame S and you're watching this other frame go by, like this train or spaceship or whatever, it's going at a constant speed V. Why is it constant? Because it's inertial frames. So just for simplicity, I'm going to be drawing always my regular frame, my you know frame S here in black, and I'm going to draw my S primed ones in orange. You don't have to, but I'm just saying just for simplicity here so you can see which one is overlaid on what. So let's go a little bit deeper with these space-time diagrams now and start to build this whole situation. So we're going to have these space-time axes for S primed. They're, remember, they're going to have uh, axes of X primed and CT primed. And the important thing is that they're going to be angled towards this line CT equals X. That's this line right here. Right, that's because we have this line, you know, y equals x like this here. So it's like, you know, this equals this, right? Because it's 45 degrees. So because of that, then I want you to think about this. So remember I said I was going to draw um, frame S primed as orange. So let's just say so this right here. When I say it's angled towards it, what I mean is it goes up some angle. Now keep in mind, I can go all the way up towards it until it actually reaches it. I can't cross it. Okay, but I can go from here, and the faster I go, faster, 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 faster. Oop, I'm going the speed of light. And remember, we're talking about inertial frames, so non-accelerating. I'm going to maybe stop at around here or so, and I'll say that is going to be my angle theta. So notice then we're going to have this here, theta right here. It's going to be the angle between the world line, that's what we call this one here, world line of the moving particle, and the x-axis. Now keep in mind, it could also be the other one. It could also. We could have written, you know, for theta, it's the angle between the world line of the particle and the time axis because these if you look at this here so watch me so these this right here is the original frame and what happens as you go faster and faster and faster this is your moving frame goes like this until of course you're going speed of light so as you're moving faster they both they both get angled that same amount that theta is the same this theta here is the same as that one now let's label things properly this is x primed this is ct primed, and that means I'm going to write this, at least in orange, as frame S primed, just to make sure we're trying to keep track of everything nice and slow here. And that means if I had some sort of event here, then I could look into, hey, does this happen at the same time, or maybe there's two events or something like that, and I could say, hey, do these happen at the same time or same place? In which frame do we talk about S or S primed? So lots of questions we could ask. But what's interesting is we have an equation, though, that relates this angle theta here that we just defined um, with V and C. And this luckily is on your data booklet, and it goes tangent theta equals V over C. So let's keep defining our variables. So what's the speed of the particle? That would be V. Now keep in mind it could be a particle, a ship, whatever. C is just the speed of light. So 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We often say it's a multiple of c. So, for example, we could say uh, v equals 0.8c. For example, this is a very common thing we could say. Is we say it as a multiple of c. 
All right, and just an exam tip, just to make sure these are here going to be uh, important to you. So leave the speeds in terms of C. So again, what I mean by that is if I say, for example, uh, what if I say that the speed, for example, is 0.9 C? Well, then if I do tan theta, for example, let's just say I'm doing this right here, that means then the tangent of theta will be equal to, let's see, V over C. And that's going to equal, let's see, it's going to be, See, tan theta is going to be V, which is 0.9 C, over C, which is, of course, just C. And notice this is, this is made like that on purpose. Therefore, we do tangent of theta equals 0.9. So that's, that's why it becomes a lot easier. When you do everything as a multiple of C, then things become simple. And now, I haven't found the angle, so remember, how do you find an angle? This is just to remind you from math class, just in case you forgot to find theta. How do I do it? I have to do the inverse tangent. So I'll take the inverse tangent of V over C. In our case right here, then I would do, for example, theta would be, for example, the inverse tangent of this 0 0.9, for example. And I would do that on my calculator and I get the answer. By the way, if you want to see it, let's see, what would that be? It would be uh, inverse tangent of uh, 0 0.9. Oh, that would be 41.987 degrees. So then I would know my angle here. And conversely, remember that if you know the angle, then you could know the speed. Or if you know the speed, you can tell the angle. So now it's time to go a little bit crazy with these right here. Um, I just want to make sure, again, just to remind you, remember we have this angle here like we've been doing before. We have x primed here. We have ct primed. But we need to draw a grid as well. So just like you're used to, you know, like with graphs, you're hopefully totally used to drawing graphs, you know, where, you know, you read values this way and this way. That should be, you know, okay for you. But this is not what we're talking about. We actually want to do some weird grid that's at an angle. So what I'm going to say is this right here. So let's say this right here. Do you see this line right here? The coordinates of space-time for S, well, if you have like some object, like a right, I don't know, it'll, it doesn't matter, right here, for example. How would I read its coordinates? I would read it directly from the axes. In other words, I would just say, oh, it's this and it's uh, this, so I could say its position is whatever in light years or meters or whatever, and the time is whatever here. You can remember it's CT, so it's a bit weird, but still, you can do a time here. That's fine, but how do I read the coordinates of that thing right here on frame S primed? How would you read that? Well, what you do is you have to draw lines that are parallel to CT primed and lines that are parallel to the X primed axes. What do I mean by that? Let's start off with this x primed, maybe this one right here. That means I have to draw then, I'm going to maybe just draw myself like a dotted line just to help me. Do you see? I'm just drawing a line that's parallel to this. And whatever spacing I had here, I just got to keep it even. So let's say it's some sort of, you know, parallel line. I'm just trying to draw parallel lines here that are even spacing, doing my very best to do that. And same thing with ct primed here. So maybe I draw it going up like this right here. I'm trying to keep this spacing the same. It's supposed to be the same. Something like this right here, okay? So something like that. And I keep going, so maybe something like that. Oh, maybe it passes right through that point. Something like this. And I want you to notice then that these spaces right here, these are a constant space-time interval. So in other words, these are the, remember I said that, uh, you know, something that's invariant. So this here is going to be some constant, you know, space time interval, this space right here. Now this might be, uh, so that's what's really important here. These will be constant here, it'll be constant here, whatever. So there's going to be some constant space time interval, sure. And now then you can look and say, oh, you can read then that, you know, the, the values right here, sure. But you notice you're going to read the value down here. That's going to be its x primed position will be down here. And where is its t primed position? It's going to be, you know, if you bring it over here, it'll be uh, over here. So you're going to read things a little bit differently. It's like you got to read positions on x, y coordinates, sure. But then you got to think of it in these weird, you know, turn your head a little bit to the side to sort of figure these out. So that's going to be important to consider. Let's now do an example so we can see what we really mean by all these. So just don't get too tripped up when you see these weird grids here. Okay, so here's a question. Although it looks crazy, I hope you'll see it's just what we've been doing before. We've got our axes right here. So this is x primed. This is ct primed. And because that's frame s primed here, all in orange. And we've also, of course, got frame ct that's been drawn and frame x here.
So this here just has numbers and numbers and away we go. And I've meant for this number right here to be this, you know, across from this one right here. And then we've got some C up here and some D. And now the question is, all right, do A and B happen simultaneously? Do they happen at the same time? Well, first of all, remember, this is relativity. It depends on which frame we're talking about. So let's see, in frame S, maybe we'll do that. So in frame S, and we'll say in frame S primed. Same thing uh, right here. Do C and D happen in the same location? We'll say an S, and we'll say an S primed. So we'll see what these here would be. So do A and B happen simultaneously in S? Let's see. Well, here's A and here's B. They're beside each other. And remember, in S, we're just thinking about black. In other words, we're just thinking about these axes here. Try to ignore all the orange now. So just look at this and this and this nice square that you're used to. Do you see this is at B is at 2 here? So is A. If they're both at the same value of CT, that means yes, they are simultaneous. In other words, these two events, A and B, happen at the same time in frame S. How about in frame S primed? Well, look carefully. In, in frame S prime, now we have to sort of turn ourselves, think only in the land of orange here. So if I look at this right here, let's see. Do these happen at the same time? Well, remember, time is up here. In other words, are these on the same lines here? Look at this one. This one right here, for example, A happens at basically time equals zero. And B happens on this line. Do you see that? That's some other time. So I could state that no, for example. And why is that? I could say that you know A happens before B. Okay, now let's find the relative velocity of frame S prime with respect to S. What? How do I find a speed from all this? Remember your equation. It's on your data booklet. It goes tangent of theta equals V over C. So I need to figure out somehow what is theta. So in other words, I'm going to just try to draw myself some little diagram right here and try to draw myself, hey, what, what is theta? Well, remember, if you think about uh, tangent, remember is tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. If this little number right here is, let's see, if I draw this little triangle right here, this height right here is 2, and this length right here is 8. So I'm going to say this is 8 here, and this is a 2 here. Do you see that? Then I can say, ah, so that means tangent of theta must be equal to just 2 over 8. Does that make any sense? So tangent of theta then is just 2 over 8. Well, hey, that means that tan of theta, well, 2 over 8 is just 1 over 4. So you got to think right now, am I trying to find theta or am I trying to find v? Because if I was trying to find theta, what would I do? I would take, hey, the inverse tangent of 1 over 4, and away I would go. Um, but I'm not looking for that. What I'm actually looking for is this. So in other words, what I'm really looking for is, hey, Remember that v over c, that's what this thing here is, this tan theta is equal to v over c. If I know that v over c equals 1 over 4, then what can I say? That means v must equal c over 4. In other words, I could state it, uh, you know, what's 1 fourth? What is that number? v then will just equal uh, 0 0.25, you could say, c course. So what does that tell you? That means your speed of your moving frame S primed is actually 25% the speed of light. You know, or you could say it's C over 4. I, li I think this looks a little bit more, you know, recognizable at least for speeds. Okay, let's talk about this one here now, part C. Do C and D happen at the same location? So let's look at C and D. Well, let's see, in frame S, that's when I just think about black here. C and D. No, look, C is down here somewhere. Let's just say I draw it like, uh, I don't know, some other color here. It doesn't matter. I'll draw it in red, let's just say. So if I just look straight down here, C is here. And where is D? D is something else over here. So do they happen at the same locations? Nope. How about an S prime? So now you got to think, so ignore the black and now just think about orange. Do you notice that C and D are lying on the same line right here? And what does that line tell you? They're at the same position. So actually, here we would say, yes, these occur at the same location in S prime. Isn't that interesting? So if you're in S prime, those things happen at the same location. Now, can a pulse of light go from C to A? So from C, could you, for example, send a pulse of light this way? No. There's a few reasons why. So let me just uh, put this right here and say, well, this is no.
By the way, this right here, I'll just maybe put uh, nice square brackets around everything right here just to make sure we're clear. So why can't you send this pulse of light? Why is that not possible? There's a few reasons. One of them is that if you, remember, uh, we're talking about uh, pulse of lights, they always go, a pulse of light always goes up like this. You know, if this right here is some sort of, you know, this is X and this is CT or something like that, light goes like this goes up at 45 degrees. That means if you sent a pulse of light, you have to go, basically the best you could do from C to A is to go 45 degrees from here. So I don't know, something like something like this, for example. That's about the best you could do this or anything above it. So this or up, like this. So you can't send it there. That's one reason. Another way to say it is that, hey, if you look at C, look at when it happened. C happened at some you know time-ish of like, I don't know, four and a half. But it has to reach A before. So in other words, you have to go back in time. You have to start here and go back in time. You can't do that. I guess I just tried to write it. So no, you can only go 45 degrees to the right to send things. You can't go any more than that. Or you could also say, hey, it's because you'd have to go back in time. From C to get to A, you have to go down. You can't go back in time. Either of these would work. So hopefully, <laughs> this is not how you feel. This is Jaden Smith, I think, a long time ago. I just like that picture. I was like, what? <laughs> this stuff can look really, really wacky. So the key is don't panic. Just think your axes that are, you know, uh, that are square like this, that's for frame S. All your axes that are bent with all these weird lines like this, that's your other land. That's the land of S primed. Just try to think of them separately. And you'll be okay. So even if the graph looks really busy, it's two separate things just being overlaid onto each other.